Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple teleport system. So, for this tutorial, I have made a few portals that have a few different parts that we need to cover before we hop into the code. As you can see, in Workspace we have two portals, Portal A and Portal B. These portals have three parts that are important to note, because two of them we are going to be using in the code. So, let's take a look at Portal A and I'll show you what these parts are. The first part is named Move Part which is going to be the part that the character has to touch in order to teleport. The next part is going to be named Exit Part, which is going to be where the player will exit at. Lastly, the Mesh Part is just the frame that I made in Blender for the portals. Make sure that all these parts are anchored and that the Move Part and the Exit Part are set to Can Collide False. Next, we have Color Correction Lighting Object in our Lighting Directory. This we will use to control the fade when a player moves through a teleporter. Then we have a fade remote event inside of replicated storage. This will be how the server communicates to the client when the client needs to have that fade effect. And finally, we're going to have two scripts, a server script inside of server script service, and this is named teleport, and a local script inside of starter player scripts named fade. I will now show you guys the code for both the server script and client script. And do remember that there will be paste bins in the description of this YouTube video for all the code. So this is our local script fade inside of starter player scripts. Stepping through the script, we first define two different services, the replicated storage service and the tween service. Replicated storage we will be using to reference our fade remote and the tween service we will be using so that we can make a smooth looking fade effect. Now, we could use a loop to fade the colors instead of the tween service. However, in my experience, I've had much smoother and more reliable results when tweening instead of looping. Next, we have our color correction reference. This is a lighting object and we're going to use this to make the client appear as if they are fading in or out. By changing the tint color, we can change how the player screen looks. Then we have our tween info, some very basic parameters here, with a one second long effect. And then after that, we define our fade remote so that the client can handle for it. Now right below that, we have code that listens for the server to communicate with that remote. The server will also always pass one of two strings, either fade out or fade in, telling us, the client, what to do. And inside of these if statements, we can create and then play a tween using the tween service. All right, so this is our server script teleport inside of server script service. This script will configure the portals to teleport our player and also tell the clients that touch the portal to make a fade effect. So to start off here, we first define our players and replicated storage services. The player service will be used to verify that whatever is touching the portal is actually a player, while the replicated storage service will be used so that we can fire the remote that will tell the client that if they have touched a portal. This is important because the client script will wait for that server to tell it, and then will fade. All right, so next we have the fade remote. I kind of gave a brief explanation as to what this does, but we'll see it again. Then after that, we define both of our portals, portal A and portal B, which are just located in the workspace. And lastly, we define a players being teleported variable that will be used to track which players are being teleported so that if a player is in the middle of a teleport, they cannot fire it again. A similar thing to what is known as the debounce, just making sure that things aren't running until they have completely finished. Now, hopping right into the functions, we have three of them. So the first one is named teleport character. This will take two parameters, a character object, and a new portal that the player is going to teleport to. Keep in mind that as we are doing this, that this won't work unless you have named the portals and the portal parts the same things as you reference them in code. Now, stepping out through this function, we first check and make sure that whatever touched the teleport part is actually a player, using the player's service. Next, we tell, or fire, the client what needs to be done, in this case, fade out. As you can see, we use two parameters in the fire client. The first one being the actual player that we need to fire, and the second one being what to do. Next, we add a short wait while the client is fading out, then move the character, changing the C-frame of the character, to the portal move part, 
and facing the portal exit position. Then we tell the player to start fading back in, wait 0.2 more seconds, and then walk the player to the exit position of the portal using the move to method on the humanoid. With this effect, it'll make it appear as if the player just walked out of the portal, which paired with our fading will look really nice. Then a quick two second delay and the players can use the portal again. Now at the end, you can see the players being teleported and we index it with the character's name and set it to nail. And in a second, I'll be explaining what that means. Now that that main teleport function has been explained, we're going to move on to the next two functions, which are touched functions to detect if the player has walked in to the move part. It's important to know that when the functions are wrapped like this without any name, they are referred to as what's called an anonymous function, meaning that we have no way to reference them again, which in this case is okay because we won't need to worry about that. Now, this first function waits for the portal A move part to be touched. When this happens, it grabs whatever touched the portal and will refer to it as hit. Then we do some quick checks on hit, ensuring it was hit by an actual player. Next, making sure the player is alive and then, wrapping back to that players being teleported table, we make sure that the player is not currently teleporting. If they are not, then we teleport them, and add them to the table, and then fire that function that will allow them to teleport. Keep in mind that the teleport character function passes in hit.parent, meaning that a base part inside of our character model touch that portal like our right arm or like our head, and if we index that object's parent, we'll get the character object itself, and then the second parameter is the portal that we want to go to. Now looking down a little further, you can see we have a very similar thing, except there are two key differences to notice. The first difference is at the very start where it says instead of portal A, portal B. This is because we're going to watch for the portal B move part to be touched. The second difference that's important to notice is that in teleport character, we have portal A instead of portal B. Instead of them going to portal B, they're actually going to be heading to portal A. This same method can be used with as many portals as you like, as long as they're in the workspace and as long as you're referencing them right. 